what's the crack? No, seriously, <laughs> what's the crack? Like, what is going on? Uh, uh, <laughs> so much for joining me today my name is david kelly i'm the irish guy vlogs but none of that really matters like what what is going on lad seriously but more importantly how are you how are you doing like i hope you're safe i hope you're not sick i hope you're doing well i really really do this is messed up it's like craziness the world genuinely seems like it's gone mad it's like we've woken up to find out that we're no longer in the same reality it's like time fractured somewhere along the way and we're now living in this really dark dystopian future like and and it's like we're all feeling that it isn't even real part of it kind of feels like we're waiting for this tidal wave of disease to just come for us or so the media has kind of been telling us the past few days here they're calling it the apocalypse and this is what it looks like and their message to us is simple Get ready. They're all like, just get ready for it. Everybody just prepare for this. It's just, it's gonna go down. <laughs> and it's just really, really easy to get swept up in all of it. People losing their jobs, the stock market's crashing, possible recession on the way. And you've probably seen the live coronavirus map that shows all the numbers, all the live cases. And you can see the disease like being mapped and tracked all over the world. And it really is all over the world. It's everywhere now and fear as well as everywhere. And I mean, you just look at that and it, it's just, it just feels like it's getting closer and closer to you. And it feels like the world is closing in on you. And it's kind of starting to affect us all. Like I was downtown yesterday only for about 10 minutes I'd say max. I was walking along the street and someone turned around the corner and I immediately sidestepped like really really far like obviously sidestepped. It was nothing against them it was just like you know these are the fucking times we're living in and I'm not I'm just taking as many precautions as I can. So there's markers outside shops about two meters apart to help us practice social distancing and I really really hope everyone watching this is practicing that and all the other practices as well like washing your hands not making unnecessary trips staying away from the sick and the vulnerable in our society which I think is a really really important one. I have elderly friends and I would honestly be devastated to think that I had possibly infected them and like if I did possibly infect someone that was that was older like the chances of them dying are really really high and to have to live with that would be horrible. The best thing to do in this situation is if you have elderly friends to just stay away from them. Call them, make sure they're okay. Like everyone knows all this stuff. I'm just repeating stuff that everyone has been saying the past few weeks and like I, I just like it's just it just feels like that not everyone is getting it. And the crazy thing about it all, as you know, is that like we could all be infected right now and we might not know for another two weeks. So the best approach is to just stay away, isolate yourself and just bunker down because we have to do this. And another thing I'm seeing as well is a lot of conspiracies online and some of them are absolutely crazy. Some of them are semi-plausible. There's just so much on both sides. Nobody knows what to believe and there's a lot of misinformation out there. But none of that stuff really matters now. Trying to place blame on a country or whoever for starting this is just not productive. We can focus on that stuff afterwards gone i'm sure trump will pull out the china card blame china for it because that's kind of how it seems to be going but right now i think it's really unproductive for us to focus on anything other than trying to solve this and we need to be responsible and we need to be conscious of our actions and our interactions with everyone just until we have a better plan of attack and then we're gonna kick this f***ing virus's ass it was really weird this year to not celebrate st patrick's day it really really was like there was no vibe around the place there was a couple of flags up but there was no buntons there was there was just no atmosphere around the place and it was just a little bit sad it was like our national day was taken away from us and i think it hit home for a lot of us just how serious this all is when we saw that like if you close the pubs in ireland <laughs> i mean like that kind of says it all that goes to show how serious this really really is if you can stop the irish people from drinking for weeks on end then uh yeah this is like deadly serious kind of seems like a little bit scary because whether it's natural or man-made it kind of feels like something wants us dead in a way and to me it kind of brings up a lot of questions about us human beings and our impact on the world and what we're really really doing to the earth is it possible that the coronavirus is mother nature's way of fighting back against us for taking everything that we have from her is the virus accidental coincidental what was it done to cull and control us there's so many questions and the thing is do we even want to know the answers to these questions because it's probably going to be dark but as dark as it all might seem there are some slivers of light coming through it all there's a company in limerick that have come up with a possible vaccine they're starting to test it soon there's lots of companies all over the world and there's one in canada and there's lots of scientific companies that are really really rushing to try and come up with a vaccine to solve this one of the byproducts of the virus is that our environment has started to get better you can see the canals in venice they've all started to improve there's dolphins there again i mean you can see pollution maps all over the world pollution over china is basically gone and it's kind of crazy to see our impact on the world when we stop for just two weeks and we see such a change in our environment it really really goes to show that we're holding 
holding back nature from what it actually needs to be. So we really have to find a balance with our environment and we really need to be more conscious about what we're actually really, really doing to the earth. Like this could be a great opportunity for us to learn a lot of things. Like I hope you've been washing your hands a lot more because it is a really important step. But just this one little thing alone can really make a difference because hundreds of thousands of people die every year from the common flu. And if we just took up the practice of washing our hands more, we could save a lot more lives by just not being infected and not infecting those people. And it doesn't really matter if it's the coronavirus or any other virus, these things kill people and we should be more conscious of this and we should be more conscious of trying to stop it. One thing I do worry about though is that the social distancing for months on end is going to have an effect on us where it might actually turn us away from each other and make us close off more. Nobody's interacting, nobody's shaking hands, nobody's hugging, nobody's kissing each other on the cheeks to say hello. And I really hope it doesn't make us scared of those interactions because if there's anything we need more in the world it's more handshakes, more hugs and just more love and it will take time but we'll get back there and we'll be stronger for it you know another thing that we could learn from this is that it's not just my life or your life that can change it's literally everyone's life on the planet it can change in an instant the whole world can come to a halt and we can start to spiral out of existence but it won't happen if we all stick together another good thing kind of that came from this is that like there's billions and billions and billions probably trillions of dollars, euros and pounds being pumped into the worldwide economy right now. And I mean, that's great and it's really going to help us out. But one thing I think the governments should learn from this is that a crisis is a crisis. It doesn't matter if it's a virus, it doesn't matter if it's homelessness, education, drugs, it, it doesn't matter what it is, a crisis is a crisis. And if this money can be provided right now when it's needed, why can't it be provided at other times when society is falling apart? Fix it. That's your job. But I guess there's no money to be made in homelessness, you know? And if this is all too much, you know, like if the news scares you, even if this video is like doing your head and just turn it off like read a book stay indoors take out a board game hang out with your family call an old friend skype with someone write that book you've always wanted to fucking learn learn a new song on the guitar learn an instrument you know pick up a new hobby write a script about the coronavirus and sell it to hollywood and make millions now could be a great opportunity to better yourself learn a new skill do something with your time you're no longer stuck in your office you're no longer like listening to your head wrecking colleagues or your boss like breathing down your neck you have an opportunity now to try and do something for yourself, so I think you should take it. But what's your take on the whole thing? Like, how are you feeling about it? And how are you feeling? Do you know anyone that's been affected by the coronavirus? Are you worried that you'll be affected? If you want to talk about it, I would love to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. It's crazy to think that we're actually living through this. Like, seriously, it's straight out of a film. The fact that we're actually experiencing this. And, and to me, it's kind of exciting in a way. It really, really is. And I don't mean that the virus is exciting or anything like that. But to me, for to exist right now, in this moment, the furthest that human beings have ever travelled, like ever came. We're living through history, like the Book of Oz is still being written right now, and sadly some people won't get to see the next chapter, or possibly even the next page. But it's still thrilling, and I think we should all be blessed that, and I'm not trying to get religious or anything, but we should all feel privileged to actually be alive right now and to be able to get through this, you know? But this is the reality we've been given, and we need to deal with this as one. And the virus doesn't care what colour your skin is, where you're from. If it wants you, it's going to get you. So we all need to be careful. We all really need to be preventative. Prevention is better than cure. We need to stop this before it even starts. And the worrying thing is that it might already be out of hand. I just really hope that this virus is going to unite us more than it's going to divide us. And when it all ends, we'll raise a glass, hopefully smarter, stronger, and looking out for each other more. Just imagine the party, though, when this all ends. Just imagine Ireland is going to erupt. It's going to be like a party for two weeks straight. It's just gonna be, the pubs are open again, lads. Oh. <laughs> I think there should be like some kind of day to mark this in history, you know, to kind of say, we got through this. You know, I saw Leo Varecker talking the other night on TV and I was like, this is our independence day. I don't like Leo Varecker at all, but I was still just like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> gotta do my duty. <laughs> And everyone has to do their duty, you know? And that is going to be it for me for this week. I don't know how this is going to affect all of my vlogs. I'm probably going to have to do more indoor stuff, but I have plenty of ideas anyway. There's no hassle there. I mean, I've been locking myself away in my room for years, so I'm all good, you know? With all my family, my friends, my subscribers all over the world, I really, really hope you're doing well. I hope you're safe. I just hope you're prepared for all the possibilities that could be coming at us. You just have to think smart be conscious and just be safe. To all the doctors, nurses, volunteers, delivery people, everyone working on the front line of this virus, you are genuine heroes. I mean it. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this very special episode of the coronavirus update and I really do appreciate it. I'll be back next Friday with another video, probably in my room or maybe outside in like a hazmat suit. We'll see. And if you are going to be stuck indoors for the next few weeks, I mean, why not watch some of my videos? I mean, you know, there's like lots of them there. If you just click up, there's uh, 
like 70 of them right there. But yeah, I'll see you all again next Friday. Bye. <coughs>